Good day folks, this is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. <clears throat> Today, uh, Isaac and Ben and uh, Connor and I, we've been working down here most of the afternoon, morning and afternoon. Uh, we had Johnny come in here and push out a bunch of old, what we call junk trees. There were honey locusts, um, there were some river birch, and uh, some uh, sycamore. And I left the uh, walnuts and the oaks. And there's a couple ash trees in here. I'm, I kind of like them. They say they're going to get chewed up by the ash borer. But so far they're making it. Um, anyway, this is a Dave and Sue's farm. And uh, this is a leased farm. And this cove right here has basically been taken over by nuisance trees. And so we had uh, Johnny come in here just with a skid steer. I know it's hard to believe that he pushed these trees out with a skid steer. I mean, I want to show you the trunks on a couple of these, or the root wads. But uh, he's a determined guy. I mean, a tree doesn't give. <clears throat> Johnny just kind of goes after it. And uh, he takes the, the bucket on that skid steer and he actually cuts the roots at the base. And uh, once he cuts those roots and he puts a skid steer bucket up here on the side of the tree right there and uh, I can actually get a log out of that one. I might get two. It's easy to get. I just whack that one out and put that on the sawmill. Um, but anyway, uh, it's a pretty nice bottom down in here and at the far end there was always a nice little grass bottom back here but all the rest of this has just been taken over by trees. And so we rolled up the fence we have a two-wire high tensile fence right here. There's one of the corners. That's one of our sucker rods. That's a two-wire high tensile fence. That post is in there about five feet in the ground. Anyway, uh, you can see all the hay. We took the Great Judy bale and roller that we uh, used to unroll hay. And we brought some two-year-old hay down here. And boy... It was hay that was baled uh, past maturity, so it has a lot of seed on it. And uh, I put down about, uh, I don't know, 10 or 15 pounds of Kentucky 31 fescue on here. And we're going to get a lot of clover out of the hay. So I didn't need to put any clover seed down. But uh, Johnny was digging these out and kind of felt bad. I mean, he's down here just really working at it. And I wanted to get this part done today because it's supposed to rain on Saturday. This is Friday. And so I'm like, Johnny, I'm going to bring a chainsaw back here. So we just started cutting, cutting these off. And uh, there's no grass under a sycamore tree. None. It kills out 100% of the grass. Uh, part of it is the leaves are so big when they fall on the ground, they just kill the grass. And so we left the, the there's some walnuts there. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's some oaks. We left some good trees, but the, the deer, the deer hunter owner, is, one of his deer stands is right there, and he's got another one on that corner over there. It was so thick in here that they really couldn't see anything if it did come through here. And so now with this seeded, we're going to have a basically a food plot in here in a couple of years. This would just be gorgeous. We did this on another farm, and in two years, now this hasn't had any lime on it, I'm going to try and get a lime truck down here and put about three ton on this just to kind of get it kick-started. And after that, we shouldn't have to do anything but unroll hay on it in the wintertime to uh, keep the fertility in there. And somebody said, well, you know, you don't ever put anything back on the land and you're selling cows off the land. You know, you're, you're kind of depleting the minerals. Well, I guess that would be right if you weren't buying hay. But, you know, we buy hay. We have a hay contractor. Hay contractor, that's what he does. Is he makes hay. And so we keep him in business by buying it. But it's beautiful down in this bottom. The grass, we had the cows in here about, uh, well, it was the same day the fit farmer was down here. So you can look back to that video. That's when they were here. Probably been, I don't know, two weeks ago maybe? Something like that. Anyway, I'm going to go up and show you where the boys are at. I just got these seeding it. 
and then Isaac came down this hill with a big round bale and uh, we had Johnny make another uh, road going up this hill over here because in the winter time there's a ridge up here we call Cedarless Ridge and um, we can't get a bale up there very well and, you know a big round bale anyway I just saw Isaac climb that hill with Connor and Ben <laughs> both sitting on that 500 Honda and it never slipped man I mean that thing went right up that hill and here was a mud hole we had a big old depression right here and uh, so I had Johnny uh, get a bunch of dirt and he filled this all in and I seeded it and had a great big old nasty thorn tree and a sycamore right there we knocked that out we left the oak and it just made it a beautiful opening right here now we got a gate that we'll be closing up there and then we'll go up here to Cedarless Ridge if I can get up here with one hand yeah. so far we've unrolled uh, six big round bales. This makes number seven right here. I mean, those young men are getting after it now. So this is put down at about 20 pounds of seed per acre right here. Johnny just put this in about 30 minutes ago. God, that's a nice road now. We used to have to go around and it's bumpy and hilly over there. And tell you what, if it was very muddy, you didn't get up there. Isn't this pretty up here? The cows were here about 10 days ago. And uh, I hadn't mowed this for about three years. And the autumn ollies have really come in here. And uh, a lot of people are having trouble with me when I pronounce autumn ollie so think about autumn the season is autumn and then olive tree autumn ollie that's what I'm saying and the way I say it I can understand why people could get confused but we have a rash of autumn olive trees trying to take over and we have to just stay on them so right there's one that I got and it will be back but you know what about every three years I just clip it off it makes really good deer feed and uh, we had this lined uh, we had a line guy come in here just uh, Wednesday and they they stockpiled that we we had it spread this hadn't had any lime on it for 20 well 18 years I think we got this farm in 2000 might have been 2002 2003 Dave and Sue. But see, if you don't put this hay on this hillside and you get a big rain, even though I put 20 pounds of seed on it, it's not going to come up. But it will now. We got all this carbon in here. All we need now is a rain to kind of seed it and then you know get it seeded. S e a t e d, seeded. And uh, once it gets the rain on it, you get a wind. It doesn't blow the hay around anymore. It just makes it stay in place. But Johnny took all that brush and he put it right down in there. Hey, he's got a good smell to it, really. But I was uh, showing the landowner what we were going to do here. He was like, well, Greg, you can't hardly get up that other. That's the other uh, roadway to the top of this cedarless ridge. And, you, I mean, pulling a big brown bill, you just couldn't get up there. You had to use a tractor, which we don't, not in the wintertime. Or if it was frozen, you know, maybe a four-wheel drive truck with the bale bed on it. But it was bumpy enough, and there was enough thorns up in there. You know, you'd probably run over a thorn and get a flat tire. But it's just a, a beautiful area up in here. And so this is going to get... Uh, about 45 to 50 days rest before we come back to it. So, I didn't think that one bale was going to go that far. That's one 1,200 pound net wrap bale. I'm telling you what now, those three young men, I did a boo-boo. I, I was up there unrolling one while 
I had uh, Isaac cutting those trees down and Ben and Connor and I were spreading hay. And I went to put a bale on them. <laughs> I got a blood blister. I put that spike in, wouldn't watch where my hand was and I pinched, pinched my thumb. But, like I had an old timer saying, you got a blood blister. He said, ah, don't worry about it. It's a long ways from your heart. <laughs> I used to go coon hunting with that guy and the coons would jump on a dog and get their teeth locked into him and just really leave a good wound on him. He'd be bleeding and the old man would go, ah, don't worry about him. He said, that's a long ways from his heart. That's, that was what his saying was. And he'd get home, he'd put a little bag bomb or salve on him and the next day the dog would start healing. But... This is going to be exciting to see how all this comes up. We gained, well, that bottom down there was basically lost. And so we gained about an acre down there. And uh, still got some thorn trees and things to go on this farm. But uh, landowner, he's excited. And it's pretty neat. Uh, Dave is a, a loyal, he's the owner. He's a loyal YouTuber now. He loves watching the, the our videos at night. And uh, he said it's just interesting. And, so thank you, Dave and Sue, for being some of our loyal landowners as well. I mean, Dave said he trusts me, what we're doing out here, and you know what Johnny's pushing out, and what we're keeping. And I've educated Dave a little bit on the honey locust trees. We need to keep some of those out there in that bottom, the good deer feed. And <laughs> I don't know if Dave is convinced or not, but he's like, Greg, you know what you're doing. You haven't steered me wrong yet. So he's letting me keep them out there. And uh, they are, they're, they're good deer feed, the, the pods. And they make tremendous shade trees and they grow quick. They just got one little deal about them, that's the thorns, you just gotta learn to live with the thorns. So, we can do that. Anyway, I'm gonna get go ahead and get out of here. And uh, somebody asked the other day on YouTube what kind of cedar we use, and that is the one we use right there. That'll hold a bushel of seed, and you notice how I've got the rack I just took a couple of U-bolts right here, and uh, I say couple, there's four, there's two on the back, and there's two on the front, and then I have hot wires going right in here, take the seat off, yeah. check that out. So when I pull the cedar off, I just undo those two clippies, I don't have to mess with my battery, taking the cover off, taking a terminal loose and all that. You just pull those two apart, and then your four U-bolts come off. I can put this on in about five minutes, and I store this in my shop. I don't want to leave it on the four-wheeler because it's got electric motor on it. And when you got this on here, it's, it's hard for uh, you. To, well, you can't you can't pack anything on the back of it because the cedar is right in the place of where you would strap something on there. But uh, I love that thing, and I love it being elevated. When I bought this, it had a, a bracket on it that made the cedar set all the way down here. I mean, literally, right back here on the back. And in the wintertime, if you're trying to frost seed clover, what would happen is the water from those tires would throw up water right there on those blades. And it would stop up your cedar. It wouldn't even spread. And so once I got it elevated, basically almost two and a half feet higher, man beautiful it, it throws seed a lot further and there's no mud in there it's just a, it's a good little outfit i've had that for 25 years and uh I'm, I'm a believer in them they just work really good and i'm not getting any endorsement for that maybe maybe a herd of cedar will see this and they'll send me a, a gift card for a <laughs> steak dinner or something anyway uh, everyone, I'm going to get out of here. The boys are done, and they're waiting on me, and we're, we're going to call it a day. And I'm taking the boys to the fair tonight. We're going to have some uh, barbecue, and uh, I'm going to play some four-point pitch. they got a pitch tournament tonight, and I grew up playing four-point pitch. I love playing pitch. Anybody that's played pitch with me, they know it. I'm kind of crazy about it. Anyway, it's a great game, and uh, I've been playing it since I was seven years old. And you know how it is. You, you grow up playing a game like that, you just... It's kind of part of your heritage kind of deal. 
anyway i'm going to sign off and uh, everyone don't forget to hit that subscribe button all the way out and uh, we'll see you next time and have a great weekend